Welcome to Cyber Skills Live. My name is Craig, I'm a computer scientist and a gadget geek and I'm interested in all things tech. And you're about to get hands on and learn cyber security skills to help defend us against a simulated cyber attack on the fire service. So we need more people to develop skills, digital skills that are going to make us more resilient against cyber attacks. In Scotland, for every two jobs in this area, there's only one applicant. So there's a huge opportunity for an interesting career. We're not expecting everyone who takes part today to be a digital expert or a hacker, but we want to highlight the wide variety of careers that are in this industry. Technology skills are really valuable, but it's not just a career for techies, as we need a wide range of skills. There are jobs from marketing, digital forensics, legal to project management. So it goes across all sectors and skills. It is a career option for everyone. We are here today in the Digital Den in Glasgow and there's over 600 of you joining us live and I'm here with David. Hello David. Hello, I'm David. I'm a web developer, multimedia artist and cyber security expert and we've been getting a lot of shout outs and people connecting with us already for the lesson we've got. Yep, so uh, who's taking part today? Let's, let's see, have a look. We've got Dune Academy, thank you for joining us. Remember if we shout out your name, give us a cheer in your classroom, I'm sure we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dune Academy. Garnock Community Campus, lovely to have you with us. Ayla High School. Um, East Wren Council. Hello. East Wren Council. Kilsyth Academy, thanks for tuning in. Special shout out to Portobello High School. And Presswick Academy, where I went. Thank you for coming, I hope the school is still going well. <laughs> White Hill High School. Sorry, White Hill Secondary. Uh, St Mungo's High School. Mearns Castle High School. UWS. Brilliant. Uni's getting involved as well. Yeah, everyone's getting involved. And should we give some more shout outs later on? Yeah, let's do that. We've got people joining from all over the UK, over 600 of you have tuned in. And we've even got people in Pakistan connecting today. And <laughs> <Good> to <laughs> in London and everywhere. It's good to see lots of people joining and, and wanting to help defend Scotland's cyber security resilience. Yeah. So, um, We've, we've done this sort of similar lesson before where we were defending a, a hospital yeah, against Glen the Glen Margaret's Hospital for the somewhat unwell. That's right. So hopefully we can use some of the lessons that we've learned from that to um, defend the fire service today because we've had intelligence that there's going to be a, a cyber attack probably within the next five minutes on the, the fire service. Um, but luckily a lot of the things that we've learned from the previous lesson we can use again. Yeah, a lot of the same skills will apply. And I guess it shows that there are so many careers in cybersecurity that every organisation needs to be defended and protected. So you produced a training video for us, David, yeah. on how to defend against the hospital and you've cleverly adapted it so that it works. Totally different totally, to, the, to, the yeah. to the hospital one. So very so subtle changes. Yeah, very tasteful as well. Let's watch the introductory video. In this interactive lesson, you're going to step into the shoes of a cybersecurity defence team to defend against a live cyber attack. Your challenge is to defend Glen Margaret Hospital for the somewhat unwell from a denial of service attack. Now you're going to be facing waves of attacks, so you'll need to work together to stop the attackers. First, you'll need to prepare by making backups of the hospital's critical files and systems. You'll use a command line tool to do this. Then, when the attack begins, you'll need to find a way to stop the attackers from accessing the hospital systems. Next, you'll need to restart and repair any systems which the attackers bring down. And finally, if you're able to stop the attackers, you'll restore the whole system and allow the hospital to return to normal. The attack is simulated, so we're not actually under attack. But this will give you an insight into the way an organisation has to defend itself against cyber criminals. Now it's time to start the operation. Follow the instructions and let's see if you can defend the hospital's computer systems and defeat the cyber criminals. Did you edit that video? No. No, someone else must have done that. And I think it's totally different to the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Very different. Totally different scenario. So, we're going to get started. Um, if you go to cyberskillslesson.com, 
um, you can sign in, not sign in, but you just click the, the first link, which is Defend the Fire Service, uh, which is different from Defend the Hospital, because yep. this is red, whereas the other one was blue. <laughs> so, um, Well, I think we've actually just started getting some intelligence in. The fire marshal has been on the blower, so to speak, and he said that they've been receiving threats. So it seems like there's an attack incoming to the fire station. Okay, so what should we do first? Well, I think the first step would be to start taking a backup of all of the fire station systems. Uh, backups are important. Do you take backups, yeah. Craig? Yeah. So to follow the instructions, go on the website and on the left hand side you'll see all the instructions and you type them in to the sort of terminal window at the right hand side. So if everyone could go on and do that now, we can start doing the backups. So yeah, I do make backups. Um, it's useful usually to do something like automatically because it means that if you have a problem, you can always go back to the to the working version of it as well. Mm. Do and you, you can, back up or? Yeah, I've, I've got backups and I keep them on a server like somewhere in California. So it's kind of nice that your data can kind of go on a wee travel, little sort of adventure overseas. Uh, and, you know, I've got friends that have backups in France and, you know, if you don't <laughs> want to... Make it sound like a holiday. Yeah, so. it's exciting though. But it's important as well because if, you, if your computer crashes and you don't have a backup, you'll lose all of your work. Mm -hmm. So you need to check that your backups are actually working as well. The hospital, or should I say, the fire service, mm -hmm. have been uh, a little bit lax with their backups. So we need to take a proper backup so that they definitely have all of their vital files and systems secured. Great, I can see people are starting to work through that now and making those backups. Keep doing that just now. Portobello High, I can see that you're doing that and Paisley as well. Presswick Academy are doing some backups right now. Thanks Presswick. Keep going. Generally, if you were doing a backup, you would um, do it maybe once a day automatically. I just have it set mm. up to do it. I've got a computer program that whenever I'm not using the internet, it just uses my internet, my bandwidth to mm -hmm. up, just constantly back up. So it never stops backing up. That's so good. if I add a file and, and make a new file, it would be saved and backed up usually good instantly. Day. Cool. Yep, seen quite a few people now working through it. Great, Paisley, I can see you doing that just now. A lot of backups happening. Yep. Hello to those who have just joined us as well. I can see you taking part. Don't worry, you've not missed anything yet. We're just doing some backups. Doing Academy, I can see you doing your backups just now as well. So, just quite a few people through this now. And it looks like our system health is at yeah, 90, 96. Yeah, so we're doing all right. Everything's going well so far. We're in a good position. <laughs> Should there be an attack, which it seems Oh. That sounds like there's an attack coming in. So let me just check this out. An incoming cyber attack. Is that a code one, Craig? Yes, it's a code one. It's a code one. So it looks as if we've got an attack starting to happen right now. I'm just trying to see what type it is. Okay, so it's a. This looks like a denial of service attack, ah, David. Ah, okay. Well, a denial of service attack. That's not good. What is it? <laughs> a denial of service attack is when a lot of people connect to the same computer system at once and they overload it with information. 
it's like um, if you're trying to get tickets for a gig mm -hmm. and everyone wants to get tickets for the same gig and they all go on the website at the same time and it just crashes the system. I that's see. a denial of service attack. But it's like that that's like just a, a natural one that might happen if a lot of people are using it. But this mm. is this is starting to look malicious here. Well this is someone who wants to attack the, the fire station. I don't think they're just I don't think they're just reporting fires. No. And on the radar, which we brought up on your screen just now, we can see some of the IP addresses that are coming in as well. What we need you to do is we need you to follow out, follow those instructions and try and block some of these IPs. So what's a, an IP address? An IP address is a unique identifier, or it's almost like a postcode for mm -hmm. a computer. Every computer that's on the internet, whether it's a server or you know something that's connected to the internet has its own unique address that you can identify it by. So looking at the IP address, we can tell that all of these IPs are not from within the Inverscott network. In fact, mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with the Inverscott region. It so, looks like it's external. So these are kind of like suspicious IPs then as well? Yeah, and actually a lot of you have already started blocking IPs. It's great. Got lots of you from Presswick Academy, thank you DC. AK from White Hill Secondary, um, Isla High School, okay, making a lot of progress and basically by blocking these IPs, it's almost like, I guess it's a bit like a guest list of what we're doing, isn't it? Like a firewall. Yeah, so it's um, basically what you're doing is it's a bit like if you were a, a bouncer at a nightclub or something like that, you're deciding who you're going to let connect to the systems. And because we know that we're trying to defend this system, this is the first thing that people might do during mm -hmm. a real cyber attack. You decide who you're going to allow to connect to the computer. Right. I suppose one of the ways that people could do it is you could just unplug your network. You know, you could just turn your computer off and stop anyone from connecting. Just like, like pull out of the wall. Pull out, the, yeah, pull out the wire. Uh -huh. But why? Why would you probably not want to do that? I mean, it might be okay if it was like a bakery that was having a cyber attack, but mm -hmm. this is Inverscott Fire and Rescue. Like they need to be able to get onto their emails, they need to be able to use the phones. If we, if they just unplugged all the computers, like it would ha have life and death consequences. That's right. So we want to be able to sort of defend against it, but without having to resort to turning everything off. Because as you say, you know, these are safety critical systems. We want to make sure that they're keep being protected. We want to make sure that the people who should be using the system can still use it. Yeah. So we're not blocking them, we're just blocking the attackers. So I can see we've got lots of um, IPs being blocked just now from right across Scotland. Thanks very much for your help doing this. I'll let you keep working on that just now. And Oh, oh. <laughs> better keep going. Keep up the blocks because, as you can see, our system is now taking a lot of stress. That's all right. We're doing all right. 29. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite hot in here. So we've had a few questions as well, and um, thanks for sending this. So quite a few people asking um, from Garnock Academy, uh, Garnock Community Campus, Bigger High School, how much money do you get if you work in cyber security? Well, the good news is um, cyber security and all digital jobs are, are well paid Very jobs. Very well paid jobs. So the average pay for a cyber security job in Scotland is how much? £51,200. So, it, not bad. <laughs> yeah. We can just shout out. It's, it's like having, Skills Panther. <laughs> this is great. It's like having like Google, you can just shout out, like, okay, SDS, what, how many jobs are in this yeah. area in Scotland? So, yeah, £51,200 is the average salary in Scotland. But if, what if you're just getting started in your career? Like, if you just you just got into cybersecurity, would you be earning, what would you be earning then? Well, you, it's probably you're going to be paid less than that to begin with depending on if you're going in as an apprentice or if you're going in as a graduate as mm. well or even if you're switching from some other career but the good news is that you know digital jobs in Scotland there's lots of these jobs available and they're well paid as well so yeah if, if you're in it not for the sort of 
altruism of defending the country, but you want to be well paid, that could be one way to do it. Um, let's see what other questions we've got just now. What's your opinion on the field of ethical hacking? Oh. So, in order to defend ourselves against cyber criminals, it's important that we know how to think like a cyber criminal as well. And we need people who can understand how to find these flaws in computer systems and how to, um, so that we know how to protect ourselves from these types of things as well. So it's important that we have these white hat hackers, these ethical hackers who can, you know, try and deliberately break into computer systems. You have to know if you're being attacked and your computer system is being attacked, you have to understand what the attacker understands. So. Ethical hacking is a really good career because you can learn all kinds of things about cryptography and you know defending systems and you can use those skills but you're not doing it in a way that's damaging, you're doing it in a way that's helping people. Mm -hmm. GM, uh, GM from Culloden Academy asks, uh, do you have to do higher maths for a job in this area? No. So you don't necessarily need to do higher maths to get a job in cyber security. If you've chosen it as a subject, great. It, you know, it might be helpful sometimes, but it's not something that you definitely need to be part. And especially if you were going into one of the other sorts of areas in this a sort of sector, which could be like things like the project management side of it, um, the marketing side of it as well, you wouldn't necessarily need higher maths. How are we doing in terms of blocks? Let's let's have a look at the, the leaderboard just now. Well, <laughs> Paisley Grammar School appear to be at the top of the leaderboard. They have prevented 394 attacks. Good cyber defenders there. Very well done. We've got Bigger High School at 212 attacks prevented. Very good work. White Hill Secondary. Oh, and it's updated again. Uh, at 191, Portobello High School at 185. So many attacks being prevented. That's good, that's good. And the system health is starting to get back, so keep doing those attacks, um, keep defending us against those attacks just now. Maybe another minute or so of that and we'll, we'll see if we can get back to 100%. The, I can see the relief on the fire marshal's face mm -hmm. in the corner of the room. I think he's glad that you guys have been defending his pride and joy. Get it. Some news just in. I've got some more questions. So quite a few of you asking about um, ways to study. How do you learn about this subject area? So there's lots of courses in schools um, and colleges that you can take to be part of this, or you can go through the university route as well. Um, one of the newer courses is the NPA in cybersecurity as well. But if you want more practical experience, there's also apprenticeship opportunities that are available as well. What about, about the variety of jobs? Some people asking about that. There's lots of jobs across all different sectors as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're just going to work in the technology sector. You could be getting a, a job in financial services or healthcare and medicine. Even places like tourism and retail need people with these cybersecurity expertise as well. So perhaps you're really interested in you know, saving people's lives, just like we're talking about here. You want to work in the healthcare service, you want to work in medicine, or you want to work in fire and rescue. You can use your digital skills to help you along with that. Thank you. Great, how are we doing for I think sort of like percentage wise? We're doing really well. We've prevented a lot of attacks. I think we've actually prevented more attacks than we did at the hospital. Oh, brilliant. I think this is That's good. Ama amazing work so far. I'm getting messages in now that basically saying we've, we seem to have slowing them down, so I think we've stopped them. I think our system health just went up as well. Brilliant. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's a code two. It's a code two, so let's see what it's saying here. Okay, so let me have a look. We what ha does that mean? It means that it looks as if we've got a different type of attack that's coming in now. Another wave of attacks? Yeah, another wave of attacks is coming in now, and this time it seems to be crashing the 
some of the system services that oh are happening. Oh my gosh, like vital fire station services. Yeah, so these are programs that are running on the fire services computers. So right. these might be programs that are monitoring the email services or the telecommunications and managing the incoming emergency calls. Right. And we need to be able to restart these services. So these will be coming up on your radar. These will be showing these little yellow circles. And if you scroll down on the left hand side, it will show you the names of the services that need restarted. And you just run the command service restart and then the name of the service and that will basically turn it off and on again, mm -hmm. is what we're doing. We're turning off and on everything. Yeah, just like you would do with your computer at home, you're turning it off, you're turning it back on again. Yeah, because the, it's been so overloaded with attacks that these services have just crashed and they're no longer working. Great, so start doing that now. Sometimes um, cybersecurity teams would set up things that automatically monitor if a service goes down right. and then it can restart it again right. for you automatically. So it's a bit like, imagine if you had something that could tell when your internet connection at home went offline. You know how sometimes you need to go and manually set the router? You have to go and like turn it off but then turn the router back on. Yeah, yeah. try turning it off and on again. Yeah. So what you could do is you can monitor something like that that checks to see if it's active and if it's not active then it would automatically go and turn it on and off for you. In this case, um, we're doing that manually, but that's something that you would want the cybersecurity team to be monitoring. You should tell the fire marshal about that. Mm -hmm. Because I think they've been attacked so much recently that if these systems just go down, vital parts of the fire service won't be working. They won't okay. be able to do so much, like actually save people's lives. So we're getting quite a few um, Service has been restarted now, that's great work yep. here. Portobello High School, Dune Academy. MM from Bigger High School, well done. Certainly a lot of people playing along at home <laughs> today. Um, uh, a waterfall. DC, Presswick Academy, thank you. Um, Calder Glen, Isla High School. A lot of very quick responses. We've not had to wait long for these systems to be restarted. That's what you want from a good cyber defense team. Quick Proactive response. Proactive response. Yeah. Good, our health is going up slightly here. Back up to 22. Yeah, 26 now. Oof. Good, keep going, see if we can get our health back. Paisley Grammar still doing well there. A lot of people logged in. Thanks for joining us today. And Culloden Academy, thanks for joining us and for restarting some services, blocking some IPs. A lot of services being restarted right now as well. Makes you a wee bit dizzy looking at this list. Yeah, maybe don't just kind of say that. I'm, I'm just checking to see how we're doing. So there, there's been attacks on things like the NHS mm -hmm. and stuff um, over the past couple of years as well. Um, and, and what sort of way, like th this type of attack, whether it's a denial of service attack like this, that is one of the most common types of attacks that tends to happen around the world in this area here. Um, and you get a thing called a botnet as well, which is ways that hackers could maybe be infecting other people's computers. So a botnet is when a hacker takes a lot of people's computers and gets them to work together to do terrible things, mm -hmm. right? So maybe there's a lot of people that have downloaded some sort of toolbar or some sort of spam infested thing mm -hmm. that has given them, the, their computer is now acting as like a rogue agent mm -hmm. and is actually attacking, in this case, the fire service yep. as their computer. Great. We're doing well here, quite a few working through it. Keep going, keep going. Still got that wave of attacks coming in right now. 
So the different types of services might be things like CCTV footage, mm -hmm. the the sort of account, the sort of inventory system that counts, you know, how much equipment that they have as well, the dispatch. Um, all these things are important. That we need to make sure that the systems are back online. Foam. You've got to have foam if you're that's putting it. out fires. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the services that was knocked offline. Mm -hmm. Well, and restart that then. Yeah. Restart the pool. Give us some shout outs. Who have we got? We've got Portobello High School, CM. Thank you very much for restarting some services. YV, or sorry, YW from Bigger High School. RS from Isla. Uh, DE from Bigger, LM from Dune Academy, all fanta doing fantastic work so far. We've up at 83%, so obviously what you're doing is working and you're bringing the fire going, service though. back to its knees. Back to its knees? Back off of its knees. Off of its knees. Yeah. Back to back its, back on its feet. That's yeah, it. that's it. Back on its feet. Um, LS from Paisley Grammar School as well. Uh, LS, yeah. LS, yeah. One of my favourite terminal commands. Yeah, that's a good command actually. List. We'll be using that in some other lessons and possibly in this one. Oh yeah. It's not the same person though, is it? I don't think so. <clears throat> I don't think so. Should we take a look at the leaderboards? Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, oh, refreshing. Paisley Grammar School at the top. Very impressive. But, and down at the bottom, the school that has my heart Presswick Academy, 163 attacks prevented, well done. Isla High School, 266, keep it up, keep those attacks being blocked. Well done, Garnet Community Campus, you've got 401 attacks blocked so far. Uh, Dune Academy, 529, good work there. Portobello High School, doing well, 629. Representing the East End of Glasgow, Whitehill Secondary, 701 attacks. You're doing really well this time as well. It's pre getting pretty close towards the, the top end of the leaderboard, Craig. Yeah. Paisley Grammar School, of course, notoriously doing quite well in these types of activities. <laughs> what does that say about those people taking part in Paisley Grammar? Probably there's a lot of you. I know there's a lot of you signed up as well. Maybe they are the next generation of um, digital defenders. <laughs> How are we doing in terms of health? What about 86, 80, 80 roughly? 386. No, I'm seeing 83, which is okay. Well, 89% now. Oh, I Keep going. It's live, it could change at any point. So keep going. As you're blocking these services and restarting services, the system health will improve. So keep working because you are going to be bringing the system back to its 100% health. We want 100%, don't we? Ideally. Whoa, Whoa yes, oh. we did it. 100% health. So we've got all clear, we've managed to defend ourselves against these, all this clear. wave of attacks, so well done. That, what a relief that is. Yes. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's another attack! It's another attack, let me check what this is. So the first one was a code one, This then we had a code two. What's this? This is, this looks like a, you won't believe this, it's a code three. A code three? A code three, which means that not only is it malicious looking IPs, but it's also crashing our servers at the same time. Right, so we need to restart the services and block the IPs at once. Simultaneously. Well, there's too much to do, Craig. How, how, how are we gonna handle that many attacks? Well, luckily we've got a distributed network of digital defenders, so maybe we could um, split up. Yeah, maybe some of you, half the class could block IPs, the other half could restart services. Organize yourself. Figure something out because we're now at 3%. There are, 3%. House, there are house fires and the sirens aren't going off. The firemen are just out the back, just having, having a latte. So there's like, <laughs> we don't know what's going on. We need to get the fire service yeah. back on its feet. That's it. And this is frankly unacceptable for a public service to have all of these systems no. down. Roasted coffee beans is not a good use of the fire service's time. Let's no. get the systems back up. Let's get things working again. So follow the instructions on your screen now. It, is, it can be a wee bit tricky, typing well, in IP addresses. They're all coming in now. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Are you making coffee? <laughs> <laughs> this is very serious, you need to focus. Yeah, I'm very, very pa I'm paranoid and terrified. Um, yeah, 
up, when you're updating the firewall, you might find it hard to type in the IP address sometimes. So what I do when I'm oh, defending, oh fantastic, <laughs> when I'm defending the fire station, I always copy and paste it in. Cheers. You got any coffee there? Yeah. <laughs> this is token amount. People will accuse us of, of skiving and getting all these uh, learners to do the work for us. Mm. Yeah, there's been controversy. Why are all these children working for free? Thank you. It's work experience. <laughs> it's great. Okay. So we've got a question from Dune Academy. Where can you work and study? Well, the answer is anywhere around the world. Um, you know, you can do this thing anywhere you want and work for companies that are not necessarily based in this country. But remember, there's loads of jobs in Scotland and, ama and many amazing courses for education and apprenticeships here in Scotland as well. So stay here and protect Scottish companies. <laughs> Hello to our other viewers from around the world too. And um, come to Scotland. We need more people with these digital skills. Yeah, I'm hoping all these people who have logged in today from Russia <laughs> and yeah. the Middle East are um, considering a career in, in cyber Scotland. Security. Yeah, in Scottish cyber security. How are we doing, David? Well, it's looking pretty intense. Let's have a wee look at the feed. Uh, we have wow. PS from Brigger High School. I mean, this is going so fast, once again. Uh, KM from Paisley Grammar School. Paisley Grammar really tearing it up with yes. the... There's only Twitter Paisley Grammar School. Oh, they're doing a good job. They're, they are the kings of copy and paste yeah. over at Paisley Grammar School. They've got, it's one they've of the got first things they get taught, yeah. yeah. Uh, CA from Whitehill Secondary, Brigger High School, Portobello High School. All the high schools doing a great job, and community groups, and UWS. That's great. And we're starting to get some of our health back as well, but still in a bit of a danger zone. Keep going. We're not out of the woods yet. There are still fires that no one knows about. Yeah, This is firefighting, essentially, isn't it? This is, this is technical this, firefighting, yeah. yeah. Let's keep going. I did ask, if you do work for a fire station doing IT, you don't get to wear the costume. You do have to just turn up in like a standard the costume, shirt. like the, the fireman's yeah, the, hat, the uniform. Yeah, the it's uniform. Like costume. The uniform. You it's don't like get that. Doesn't come with it. My way to my dressing room before you get started. I think that's the main perk of the job, though, is the hat. Oh yeah. The authority, the statue, the statue gives you. I'm sure if you worked in the IT team, Thatcher. they would let you wear the helmet. Maybe. Maybe. How are we doing in terms of system health? Well, 20. system health is. Down to 27% oh. now. Thank you. Oh, gone up to 34. So thank you, Beggar High School and Paisley Grammar School and Isla High School for restarting those services and locking those IPs. It seems like people have split up and are dividing the workload really well, which is great. Good. So we've got a question in from okay. Garnick Academy. So how can we actually make things more secure then? So if you were trying to defend a system or even like your own personal information, what could you do on your own computers? I've got a few ideas. Go for it. Uh, I'd firstly, use a good password. Mm -hmm. Make sure that your password is not easy to guess. Use a lot of random words. Yeah, at least three random words. Three random words is more secure than, you know, one word and some numbers and pound signs and stuff. Like the longer the password, the better the password. Did you agree? Yep. Um, get a firewall. Yep, turn on the firewall feature on mm -hmm. your computer. So most computers, whether you're on um, a Mac or a Windows machine, will have a firewall setting. Mm -hmm. You can turn that on in security and really all you just need to do is turn that on once, set it and forget it. That will help defend you against those types of attacks. If you're on social media, check your privacy settings. Make sure that you're not oversharing. You don't want to be giving away your location and photographs mm -hmm. or sharing too much about yourself because att attackers can use that against you. So be very careful with your privacy and backups yeah. too, I suppose. Yeah, the backups. I mean, we spoke about it in terms of defending the fire service, but this is all things that you could be doing, you know, at home with your own devices and equipment mm -hmm. as well. So you would want to make sure you have firewalls turned on. You'd want to make sure that you're using a good password and you've got regular backups of your computer as well. Something that we've not covered in this is the physical protection. Like we're defending from these cyber attacks, but what about if someone were to actually break in and attempt to steal the computers as well? Um, you could, you, well, you know what? People might come in and try and damage. No, that's true, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking about maybe encrypting the computers. Right. You know, like turning on um, 
encryption software. So again, on your computer, it's just something that you can turn on in the settings. Well, my phone has a thing that means if it gets nicked, I can press a button on, I think, find my iPhone and just wipe it. So mm -hmm. if someone ha actually stole my phone, they wouldn't be able to get all of my documents and all of my photos and all my phone numbers and everything. Mm -hmm. You could do a remote wipe. Yeah, remote wipe. That's great. Thanks very much. Oh, look at that system health. Oh, it's doing a bit better now. Yeah. That's great. We're getting there. A lot of attacks prevented. Still a lot to do. No, nope, keep going. So don't stop. Keep restarting the services and blocking IPs. And of course, we've only got the top eight schools on the leaderboard, but there are many other review and many other groups involved, and we can see you, and it's excellent. So thank you to everyone who's contributing. Even if you're not on the leaderboard, keep working away and keep keep doing stuff. So this is a simulated attack today. Mm. If this was in a real sort of attack, would uh, would it really be like 600 people doing these things individually? I don't think you would have a security team of 600 people. <laughs> I think it would be really impractical. I think it'd be very expensive. I well, like average salary of £50,000 each. Yeah. Know? I mean, it's a lot of, I mean, there's definitely a lot of jobs mm -hmm. available, but I think in real life you'd maybe have a smaller team of people managing this, like maybe, you know, an operations team. And they use software, they use apps basically that can help manage this. In fact, some of those apps are made by companies in Scotland as well. Oh really? So yeah, yeah, there's companies in Edinburgh and in Glasgow who specialise in building security software that is used by other businesses as well. So, you know, in the same way that if you, you know, you maybe didn't want to work for a specific company, you could be working in a team to make a product that is then sold to these other companies as well. And not just companies in Scotland, but those products can be sold to companies around the world as well. Wow. Scottish exports, it's always good. Yeah. We're doing well. Wow, there's a lot of IPs and services being blocked. Well done, everyone. Keep it up. Thank you, GC from Presswick Academy. Thank you, GF from Bigger High School. MC from Dune Academy, well done. MM from Bigger High School. Uh, HJ and JM and EC. LM from, from different schools. LM from Dune Academy. Yeah, I don't know who you mean. They know who they are. Some people don't need the. Some people don't need their name fully and their school. They they take the. They don't glory hunt. <laughs> RM from Portobello High School. Well done. <laughs> What's the yeah. leaderboard looking like, David? Oh, Garnet Community Campus at it again. Yes. That's good. Well, Paisley wow. Grammar. Again, what are you gonna do? They're good. That's great. There's crack team there, brilliant. Bigger high school, doing good. White Hill Secondary. Dune Academy. Portobello High School. <laughs> Do you have the other list of, uh, of all the active schools, Craig? Yes. Because I'm know i aware that we're only looking at the top eight, but there are lots of people involved right now. Oh yeah, I'll give you some shout out. New Battle, High School. Who else can I see? Other groups. <laughs> Presswick Academy. Thank you, Presswick. Wow. This is great seeing this many people taking part. Rafi, if you are in Pakistan playing along, uh, thank you. Ayla, high school, brilliant. Culloden. Oh yeah. We can see all this live as you're doing it right now, it's brilliant. Good, keep it up. I'm starting to think some of these people might have more than one window open. They might. I think that might be what's going on. They're good at defending it. Yeah, they're not so good at using different initials. Mm. Sometimes that's people something just we need to look into, yeah. <laughs> Are we doing in terms of health and stuff? Are we getting better? We're definitely back in the green. Good, good, but we're not quite 100% yet. Nope, there's still fires to be put out, metaphorical fires and, and real and actual ones. fires yeah. which need attention. Oh, it's gone back down again. Has it? Yeah, 76% now. We keep going, Paisley Grammar obviously on Someone's, tea break. Someone is taking a wee latte tea, <laughs> tea break and it's not the firemen. Or people. Fire people.
Glen. Oh, Calder Glen. Brilliant. Good old Calder Glen, thank you. White Hill Secondary, again, bigger high school, brilliant. Yep. Wow, 96%, we're nearly there. We're really getting close to perfection, Craig. Yeah. Nearly there, once we get to 100%. Garnock Community Campus. Where is Garnock? It's um, North Ayrshire. North Ayrshire. Okay, it's you should know that. I should know that I'm from Ayrshire. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well done. You've obviously not been. I've to not Garnock been to Garnock, Garnock, but now you will. I've not been to the Community Campus. We've reached 100. percent We did it. Yes. Yay! Well done. Yay! Woo! All clear. All clear then from the fire marshal. Um, so that seems to be the end of the current wave of attacks, but we've still got one more activity that we need to do. So It's to, not over yet. It's not over yet. So what sort of... Well, you know, we thought there was an attack coming, we backed up the system, an attack happened, we blocked the attack, we prevented the attack, mm -hmm. but now we've got a computer system and some of it's, you know, there's some files missing and mm -hmm. stuff and like all of our good stuff is in the backup that we took at the very beginning. So sure. we need to now, just to end things, restore the backup that we made at the very beginning. And the instructions coming up on your screen now, step 10, all you need to do is run the, this command and it will bring in the database and everything will be back to normal. Let's restore from backup. Let's do that. You'll also get the chance to give some feedback as well after you've done that. So work through that step for us now. This is, I mean, that's the, it was really lucky that we took a backup at the start because it makes it really easy for us just to roll back to the way we were before. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because like, if we hadn't taken a backup and this attack happened, the, the fire service might have lost critical, critical information about foam or helmets and all the other systems that mm -hmm. we've got in play. Like the data could have been lost or corrupted. That's it. And I know that when we've been building stuff in the past, you know, we do backups so that if it all goes wrong and we make a mistake or we're hacked or something like that, it's easy for us to sort of restore as well. And this is something that you can do if you run your own websites or you're using your own tools as well. That regular backup is one of the best ways that you can make yourself more cyber secure. I took a backup of this app this morning. Did you? Yeah. You were ah, pleased really? to hear. I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah. I also do, a, I, have a, I have it set up to do an automatic backup every night at midnight as well. Oh, on your computer, you mean? Yeah, on the, on the, on the your server. server, right? Yeah, on the server itself. Don't know if that was giving away too much security information there. Maybe. Like, what's Maybe. your password for the server? That's none of your business. Mine's is admin. Uh -huh. Great. Very secure. So once you have completed the lesson, do give us some feedback. Let us know if you think you'd be interested in a career in cybersecurity, um, and we'll be. <laughs> we've it's got hard a few, protecting a, few, a fire station, yeah. How hard protecting a fire station? Mm -hmm. Ah, so people are now now telling us yeah, what they learned. That's great. So we've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of good feedback. Cool. So we'll look at that after the lesson as I well. I think that's a good idea. Because I might just start reading it out. Yes. Blurting Which some of the feedback. Yeah. That's fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> got a few more minutes left to do that. Let's have a look at the, the final leaderboard for today as well. So should we do the countdown at number eight? At number eight, my school. <laughs> Very well done to Presswick Academy with 197 attacks prevented. And well done to Garnet Community Campus. You achieved 480 attacks blocked. Isla High School have successfully blocked 595 attacks. Very well done. Portobello High School, wow, you, you blocked 1,279. <laughs> Dune Academy blocked 1,340. White Hill Secondary, 1,497. Do you know this feels very much like your vision <laughs> at this point? <laughs> Carry on. Bigger High School, 1,974. 1900s. Different way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. Different way of saying See, it. I would have said 1,974, but it's I wanted same. to say 1974, but that's, that that's would a, be a year. So nearly a band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at number one, we've got Paisley Grammar School, which is 2,428. Well done, Paisley Grammar School. But of course, we all work together to do this today as well. And there's lots of jobs in this area in Scotland. 
Thanks very much for joining us as part of this live lesson. Cyber Skills live lessons will return later this year as well. If you've enjoyed take part in the lesson today, all the stuff that we've been working on is available on the website and you can replay this as many times as you want without having to listen to us talk through it as well. <laughs> so the website is cyberskillslesson.com. If you enjoyed taking part in the workshop today, maybe your teachers could take a photo, send some tweets to us. The hashtag is cyberskillslive. And, and our Twitter account. Our Twitter handle is Digital World HQ. Yep, at Digital World HQ. So we're going to keep up the activity today. Thanks for joining us and thanks for helping us defend Inverscott Fire Service. The fire people, thank you. <laughs> Let's keep working.